Hello, all performers, and welcome to this, the last message you'll be receiving from me in 2023. And what we're going to get into today is three of the questions that I ask myself. Very simple, big picture questions to evaluate my year. We're not going to talk at all necessarily about the next year or about 2024, but we're just going to talk about three different questions, questions that I've also asked all of my coaching clients that I think you can use to be able to really make the most out of the last year that you've had, because I hope you've had a great one, and I'm sure that you have. We just need to look at it in the proper context, and I think these are three questions that are really going to serve you as you serve others. So let's go ahead and let's get right into it. First one, what are you proud of? Yes, I know this can be very difficult for all of us to want to say, yes, I am legitimately proud of doing this thing. Of When I've asked this question to a lot of coaching clients, they usually immediately gravitate towards some of their victories or some of their wins. But so often we want to suppress and we want to diminish our own wins and victories and accomplishments. There are a couple of reasons why we do it. I'll get into them in a second, but I was listening to a podcast on on a flight back from Phoenix to Denver earlier this week, and I was listening to a gentleman named Todd Herman. He's a big peak performance guy, and he used the phrase that really resonated with me. You know, when you are unwilling to internalize and to be proud of some of the wins and what you've done, what you're basically doing is you're throwing away the poker chips at the poker table of life, meaning that the poker chips are actually the hands that you've won, the things that you've accomplished, the things that you should genuinely feel proud of. And if you're just throwing away all of your chips and discounting them, well, then they're not really serving you as you serve others and they're not really helping you as you move forward. And a couple of reasons why we do this. I think number one is we think that being proud of things that we've done is somehow going to lead to complacency. And the two are actually very different things. Yes, you can be proud of what you have done and still be driven towards what you are going to do. And then number two is especially coming from Minnesota where we all want to be Minnesota nice is we think being proud of things is somehow going to make us arrogant. It's somehow going to make us a know-it-all just in a way we don't want to come across to others. And that is also not the case. When you internalize and when you harness some of the things that you're actually proud of, some of what you've done throughout the course of the last year, what that should give you is the quiet confidence and the quiet belief in yourself, seeing those poker chips, and knowing that as you continue to move forward, you will be able to do, you will be able to have more wins, you will be able to have more victories, and you will have the belief that you can then do more things that you will be proud of in the future. So that's the number one question. First one that you ask is, what are you proud of? Second one, what are some of the lessons that you've learned? Now, when I ask coaching clients this, they usually go to the flip side of it because sort of like the old adage, we learn a lot more from, from our losses or from our mistakes than we do from our wins or from our successes. A lot of the lessons that we learn in our lives are things that we've had to persevere through. Maybe things that you know haven't necessarily gone our way, um, things that we really struggled with, things where maybe we lacked the resources, um, and times when our character was tested. And what we can do when we look at those as not trying to wish them away or not trying to look at those as, as things that we wish wouldn't have happened, what we can do is when we start to look at what are some of the lessons that I learned about myself, what are some of the lessons that perhaps I learned about others, what are some of the lessons that I learned about the world, when we start to look at some of those lessons, now we are all growing and we are all gathering maybe feedback from that failure, let's say, and we're using that to be able to move forward, knowing that if something perhaps didn't go our way or if we struggled with something, it's, it was actually a learning experience and it's something that'll serve us in the future. So number two is what lessons did we learn? And number three is the game of energy. 
right? Life, it becomes more and more apparent to me every single day that life is a game of energy. So the third question is, what gave you energy in the last year? And also, what robbed you of energy? And I think this two-part question in the way of energy is critically important because perhaps I'm a little bit more in touch with this because I actually came down with a bad bout of COVID right after Thanksgiving. Um, I'm still trying to kick kind of the last remnants of it. And when you don't have energy, everything just feels hard. It just feels like you're grinding and slogging trying to get through every single day. And when we have energy, everything just feels a little bit easier, right? Like everything is just a little bit more in harmony and a little bit more in flow. And I think to ask ourselves the question, and you can look at this in the way of, I would say, tasks or potentially people. What are the people or what are the tasks that give you energy or that gave you energy And what are some of the tasks or potentially what are some of the people that rob you of energy? Where at the end of the day, you just feel like, oh God, I am just exhausted physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, or otherwise. And then the next kind of follow-up question to that, and I said I wasn't going to talk about planning in 2024, but I guess this is the one thing that I'll say is when you identify the what gave you energy, what robbed you of energy, is strategically thinking about how can I schedule more of the things that gave me energy and minimize the things that robbed me of energy, either in the way of people or tasks, to be able to better move forward in the new year. So I think if you just ask yourself those three very simple questions— What am I proud of? What are the lessons that I learned about myself, about others, about the world, etc.? And what gave me energy or what robbed me of energy? If you ask those three questions to evaluate the totality and the big picture of your year, you're going to be much more poised when we get into some of the things that you can do to be able to plan your next year as you move forward. So thank you so much for being here over the course of my 2023. One of the things that I found that actually gives me a ton of energy is whether it's a video or a podcast or a blog post or an email to my list or just a simple post on LinkedIn or anything else, I get a lot of energy from creating content and creating value for you. So I appreciate you being here. Uh, For everyone that's sent uh, a nice message or anything throughout the course of the last year, I don't take any of that for granted, whether it's a DM or something after a speaking engagement. I'm just appreciative of all of it and very grateful for what I get to do. So I will bid you adieu to 2023. I hope you have a fantastic new year and a great start to 2024. Take care. Keep out performing. Hello, outperformers. Three more quick things before we sign off here today. First and foremost, thank you so much for listening to this episode. I understand how many different podcasts are out there, and I do not take a single second of your time for granted because time is truly our most valuable asset. It is our most precious commodity. And I appreciate you taking that time and you spending it with us here today. Second, if you found value in this podcast, maybe you've noticed, but podcasting has gotten quite popular as of late. And if you would like to help support the Outperforming Movement and the Outperform Podcast, one of the best ways that we can get it found is for you to give it a favorable review and rating on whatever your favorite podcasting platform happens to be. So head on over to iTunes, head on over to Google Play, and give it a favorable review. And while you do that, also share it with someone else that you know that is just like you, is driven by growth and wanting to be the best personally and professionally in every single thing that they do. Number three, if you want even more tools and tips and strategies to be able to be your best personally and professionally, head on over to scottwelly.com. That's S-C-O-T-T-W-E-L-L-E. There are loads of different resources for you on everything from goal setting and grit 
to resiliency and focus, to confidence and motivation and routines and habits and everything that you can possibly imagine to help you be your absolute best every single day, personally and professionally. Once again, if you'd like to access those free resources, head on over to scottwelly.com, S-C-O-T-T-W-E-L-L-E. So as I sign off, thank you again for spending your time with me here today. Keep outperforming and as always, wish you the best of health, happiness, and high performance. Have a great day.